22,000 pounds. It shows that in the first week of uh, April, if an insect take a blood infected blood meal, it will take 60 days to develop the virus and so on. But when we use the microclimatic temperature, it shows that it will take only around, on, on that time, it will take around 40 days. It, it is just almost a two thirds shorter. And, and one of the most important criteria for any insect borne disease is the lifespan of the insect. We consider the insect will like live 60 days, but what if it could just survive only 30 days, which is very likely in Scandinavian climate. And if it is the case, if, if we think that the insect can only survive only 30 days, what will happen? It will happen that we will see only virus, uh, Shemalunuk virus transmission possible between few days before June to the last week of August, just only three months of the transmission season. But practically we have seen the Shemalunuk virus in April and May, and also in, in September. How is it possible? And now we have the microclimatic temperature. Even if they survive 30 days, it shows that the virus development is even possible in the middle of April, and it continues 15 days later. Well, now I will summarize my, my, my talk. Uh, what is the take home message from my study is that microclimatic temperature is different from meteorological temperature. And there are, they are different, there are different microclimatic temperature in different habitats. They're so different that the choice of in, input temperature has a large impact on the virus development. And the virus development could vary, especially even in a small country like Denmark. And we recommend to identify the actual resting site of the vector or the insect in order to model the impact of disease transmissions. And we, we also recommend to use microclimatic temperature to assess the risk of getting interruption of any infectable disease in any countries.